everyone. Welcome back to Sunday School after those lovely Easter holidays. Well, I hope you all had a good time and you're all enjoying being back to school, whether you're really little or whether you're in secondary. Well, um, we had quite a bit of mad weather over the holidays, didn't we? We have lots of lovely sunny weather now, don't we? But do you remember for the holidays what we had? Well, we had maybe the snow. We've had rain. Thing we didn't have or seem to have was thunder and lightning. <gasps> Maybe I spoke too soon. Anyway, Jemima, come on over here and help me. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Sunday Schoolers, back. Hello, Sunday Schoolers. I was just talking about weather, and what does that make you think of? What makes me think? What book of the Bible does it make you think of? Um, Jonah, stuff like that. Well, Jonah, yes, but maybe do you think about whenever God created the world? Yes. God created all the weather, didn't he? Yeah. And he designed the world just to be just right. So we get rain when we need it. We get sunshine when we need it to make plants grow. And everything is just made just for us to be able to survive on this planet. Well, this week we're going to be looking at Genesis. And we're looking where better to start. But at the very, very beginning, looking at the first six, uh, seven days of creation. Uh, so Mark's going to be talking about that. We're going to have a verse coming up linked to that. And the craft, digging deeper and everything else as usual too. So we hope you enjoy and are enjoying the good weather at the minute too. Hello Sunday Schoolers and welcome back. I hope you all have enjoyed your Easter holidays and uh, everyone is back to school and really enjoying your time. I'm sure I can speak for all the parents listening and say isn't it lovely to have school back and everybody in school Monday to Friday. Now just for a wee change between now and when we finish Sunday school at the end of May, we're going to do a new series. We're going to not do any more parables and we're going to look at uh, the book of Genesis. And at the very beginning of Genesis, we have creation. So our first talk today is going to be all about creation. And it's really easy to follow this one in the Bible because it's the very start of the Bible. So if you want to follow this along, Turn to the book of Genesis and we're going to be starting in chapter 1. The story of creation. The Bible tells us that in the very beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It was not something that happened by accident or by chance. Everything was planned and controlled by God. At the start, the earth was shapeless, it was a mass, and the Bible talks about it being void or being empty, and that God's spirit hovered like a bird above this watery mass. Then God said, let there be light, and light appeared. God was pleased with it, and the, divided the light from the darkness. He called the light day and the darkness night. Together they formed the first day. God then said, let the vapours separate to form the sky and the oceans below. So God made the sky dividing the vapour from the water below. This all happened on the second day. Then God said, let the water beneath the sky be gathered into oceans so that the dry land would emerge. And so it was. Then God named the dry land earth and the water sea. And God was pleased. Then God commanded, let the earth burst forth with every sort of grass 
and seed and plant and fruit trees and all the types of beautiful uh, trees and plants that we can enjoy. And the fruits had seeds inside them which would produce all kinds of fruit. And so it was, and God was pleased. And this all happened on the third day. Then God said, let bright lights appear in the sky to give light and make the day and the night. Then they will bring seasons and that will give us our days and our weeks and our months and our years. God made two huge lights, the sun and the moon, to shine down upon the earth. The larger one, the sun, to uh, be in the sky during the day, and the smaller one, the moon, to be in the sky during the night. And God also made the stars and set them in space. And God was pleased, and this all happened on the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters be full with fish and other life and other sea creatures and let the skies be filled with birds of every kind so god created great sea animals and every sort of fish and every kind of bird multiply and stalk the oceans he told them and to the birds he said let your numbers increase and fill the earth God saw that everything was good, and that ended the fifth day. And God said, let the earth have every kind of animal, cattle, reptile, and wildlife of every kind. And so it was, God made all sorts of wild animals and cattle and reptiles. And God was pleased with what he had done. Then God said, let us make a man, someone like ourselves, not like the animals. Man is to be the master of all life upon the earth and in the skies and in the sea. So God made both man and woman. And God blessed the man and the woman and told them to multiply and fill the earth and rule over it. And God said to them that they are the masters of the fish and the birds and all the animals. And that he had given them the seed bearing plants throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for their food and given all the grass and the plants to the animals and to the birds for food. Then God looked over all that he had made, and it was excellent in every way. This ended the sixth day, and then on the seventh day, God rested from his work of creation. Now, boys and girls, isn't that an absolute amazing story that we can read at the very start of the Bible about the creation of this beautiful earth that we live in? I know as uh, we look out at times we can see the bad weather and then we can see all the wind and the rain and the snow and the hail and everything that we have had to uh, look at over the past couple of weeks and now we can enjoy the beautiful sunshine in the sky but we have to realize that it has all come from God's hand sometimes in school especially some of the older ones they'll say that this all happened just with a big bang and there was out of nothing this earth was produced and Animals have evolved from little lumps of bugs in water and men evolved from monkeys and all this kind of thing because 
You see, boys and girls, a lot of time people do not want to recognise that God is in control. And they want to be in control, so they don't want to ever say that God had a plan for this world. But we know from the Bible that the whole purpose and plan of God was so that ultimately that his son would come into this world to die upon the cross. You see, not in this part of the story, but next week, the next stage after creation is what happened when man was in charge and whenever things started to go wrong because man disobeyed what God had told him to do and not to do. And you see, boys and girls, it's still the same today that when we disobey what God has told us to do and not to do, it's just because of a nature that each one of us are born with. And that nature is sinful and it means that it just wants to turn away and not do what God wants us to do. But the Bible is so clear and it tells us that God just didn't leave us to try and make our own way through this world. That he has got a plan for us. He has got a purpose for us and he has got a marvellous uh, mission as it were for you and me to fulfill while here upon earth. And the first stage of that plan is so that we can know the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal saviour. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world. He came into this world so that we could be saved, so we could be cleansed from our sins. And by putting our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, and believing that when the Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross, we can realise that when he died on the cross, he died for our sins. And that by believing on him, we can be made ready to be in his presence and that for all eternity. You see, boys and girls, in the garden, in uh, this very start of creation, it was only when disobedience and sin entered that everything started to go wrong. And that's why things are wrong in this world today. That's why there's so much pain and suffering and death and destruction, all because of sin. But by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, we can know our sins forgiven and we can know of a place in heaven. Now we're looking forward to the rest of Sunday School and then you can tune in next week and we can hear the next exciting a section on this story. Bye bye. Good morning again everybody and I hope that you all had a really good Easter holiday. I'm sure you enjoyed being off but I'm sure you're glad to be back at school. Are you glad to be back Jemima this week? Yeah, yeah good. All right so the talk today as you've just heard was about beginnings and that's found in the book of Genesis because that's the very first book in the Bible Jemima. So Jemima and I today are just going to learn the very first verse in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And where's it found, Jemima? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. That's right, so you read it. It's a nice wee simple one. We thought we'd start off easy this, this time. All right, Jemima, you read it out. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Good, that's it. Isn't that really easy this week? So there should be no problem in everybody learning it. All right, Jemima, will we say it again? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, one more time. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Okay, so see how you all get on with that and don't forget to post your videos and let's see that you've learned the very first book in the Bible. All right, we'll say cheerio and we'll see you again next time. Bye bye for now. Bye.
So these numbers represent the days and what was created and what first day was the light and dark. Fifth day, seas and the birds of the air and all that was in the seas. Um, the uh, plants on day three. So this is just to help sort of firm up in our mind what we've been hearing about today. Um, so Jemima has coloured in this bit for me. We'll colour in this bit, the God created bit, and cut it out. You'll find on the God created that we've punched out holes already. Let's colour in nice and colourful. I'm going to show you Jemima's at a minute, in a wee minute. And then you color it? you untang that that's a bit got a wee bit twisty. Um, and then you colour in these bits. Now there is quite a bit of cotton to do, so it is a bit of a long craft, but um and with the good weather, uh, maybe you're more uh, keen to be outside. But sure, give it a shot. You don't have to do it all at the one go and we know that you've got homework. Outside. You can do it outside in the sunshine is a good idea, Jemima. No, uh, in the midst of God's creation. So Jemima, this is this was hanging fine about five minutes ago. So there we go. Um, there is wool in your uh, craft box, so you or in your craft bag. So if you just cut out lengths of wool, hopefully everybody will have enough. But don't be afraid; you can use wool at home as well. A color, different colors, be mm -hmm. lovely. You can even put wee beads on it, and you put a bit of wool at the top. So there's your your hanger to remind us of the seven days of creation. The annoying thing is that the numbers turn around a wee bit, so you might have to fix that a bit. But. But that's lovely and bright and colourful. Enjoy making and we look forward to seeing you. We also look forward to hearing your verses with Sharon. Thanks very much. Bye. Sorry, there's a bit of a problem. It's points up to time, but there's no Benji. Give him a shout. Benji! Benji! What? What? Points up to time. Oh! <gasps> Better get mine in, John. Hey, Jemima, what are you doing here? And on one point, there's loads of people on one point, we've got the McCrackens, Hannah, Zara Palmer, Joel and Evie, Megan and Emily, Bobby and Grace, Lewis and Leah, and Ian and And Bobby and Grace are on one point. We should have got a prize last week, but we forgot. But, so you'll get yours next week, okay? And on two points, we have Thomas, Sam and Isabel, and Erin and Phoebe. And on three points, we have... <gasps> We've got no one. Oh, We'll have to get someone to next time for three points. This has been Sunday School Points Update. Thank you, and goodbye. I need a drink here.
Hello and welcome back again to Digging Deeper. I hope you enjoyed your break and that you've settled back into school again this week. Today's topic is Woe Mind Blown. The key verses are found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 and verse 18. And they say, We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We ourselves heard this very voice, born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Have you ever seen something that really blew your mind? That was beyond your expectations? We just have to look out at God's marvellous creation to see his hand and his creativity in everything that was made. One such example is Niagara Falls. Whenever you see it for the first time, it is a mind-blowing sight. The vast volume of water pounding relentlessly to the ground. You just see God's wonderful, wonderful creation and his almighty power. One day the Lord Jesus took Peter, James and John up a mountain. It seemed such an unspectacular trip. Luke's Gospel tells us that Peter and the other disciples fell asleep when they got to the top. When Peter woke up, he quickly realised that he was missing something extraordinary. There was Jesus, standing with his two feet on earth, but shining with the glory of the eternal kingdom to which he belonged. Peter's mind was blown, to the extent that he didn't really know how to react. He quickly suggested that they all stay on the mountain, oblivious to the fact that in order for Jesus to take his disciples right into his eternal kingdom, he was going to have to first take the hard road to the cross. It was only when Peter saw his Lord risen from the dead that he began to understand the true majesty of that experience on the mountain when he saw Jesus transfigured. He realised that Jesus is uniquely qualified to bring us into his eternal kingdom because he beat death and is now back in that kingdom as a risen, glorified man. There's a few passages that you can read. and It's 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to 18 and Luke chapter 9 verse 28 to 36. And as you read these passages, just let the majesty of the transfiguration soak into your mind. You, think, you can think about what it would have been like to be there, and even attempt to draw a picture of what had happened. As you consider that day when Peter got a glimpse into the eternal kingdom, remind yourself that Jesus is there right now, and that those who acknowledge him as their king will one day join him there. This is what motivated Peter to press on to get to know God better, to serve, serve him more and to grow in godliness. Ask God that you will be motivated in a similar way as you consider Jesus' majesty. Thank you again for listening. Father, we just thank you for this another week of Sunday School, Father, and we just we thank you for this ability that we have, Father, to have our Sunday School online, Father, even... Though we can't meet together in person, Father, we just we thank you that we can still sound out the gospel message, Father, among the children. Father, we just we pray for all the children, Father, that they were back to school this week. We pray that you would have been with them, Father, and help them to settle in, Father, and as they go into a new week, we just pray that they would know your blessing with them, Father, and that they'd be able to settle in with their friends again. Um, Father, we just we pray now for that some little boy or little girl, or even mum or dad, Father, who's listening to, who listened to Sunday school today, Father. Just pray that they would have learnt of your majesty and your ability, Father, to see you, Father. You sent your son to die on the cross for us, and he rose again the third day, as we've just celebrated at Easter, Father. And, Father, it's through that that we can be saved and that we can be in heaven with you. We just pray, Father, that somebody listening today would realise that, Father, and that they would take it to their hearts, Father, and just pray that they would come to know you. Just leave all things with you now, Father, in this new week. In Jesus' precious name, Amen.